This may be the last Sunday that I, I may conclude on this year for your mountain to become a plain. We'll just see as the Lord would lead. But stand for the reading of the Word of God. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 1. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. And that's what I have, pray happens to many of you as we go through this year. That God would wake you out of your physical sleep. And wake you out of your spiritual sleep. And shake you and say, you've seen a lot of things, but you just wait. You need to see this as well. And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it. And his seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof. And two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel, angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. I've told you, he was totally ignorant of what it was. And he admits it, a frank admission of his ignorance, a frank admission, a, a admission of his not knowing what is going on and Again, you can't know it by yourself. We can't do it by ourselves. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by my, come on, say it with me, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying. Praise. Praise Hallelujah. Praise. Hallelujah. Praise. One more time, shouting. Praise. Praise. Like the rushing of a mighty wind. Like the rushing of a Like a rushing, like a rushing, a mighty wind, a mighty wind. Oh, like a river that is overflowed, like a river that has overgone, overflowed its banks, run over the dam, like run over the levee. rapture take place, you wouldn't make it. There are folks in this room, should the rapture take place, you'd be standing right where you are while the rest of us are gone. You may never have known Jesus, or you may have, but while the Holy Spirit is flowing in this church as he has been in the past few weeks, what you need to do is to let him flow through you 
and let the river flow over into your life. And right in the middle of a song, right in the middle of a chorus, right in the middle of a church worshiping like this, you are welcome and free to come walking or running down these aisles to an altar and let Jesus wipe it all away and cleanse it all and cleanse it all. Let it This is the year for your mountain to become a plain. Cry grace unto it, and that mountain can become a plain in an instant's time, in a moment's time. Somebody's mountain is about to crumble right now. It's not a matter of it taking six months to get there. It's not a matter of it taking three months. It's not a matter of it taking till tonight. I said your mountain can become a plain instantly, instantly. God was trying to encourage Zerubbabel, and he said, this is what's going to happen. You're going to bring and cry unto it, grace, grace. Shout unto that mountain, and it shall become a plain. Because it's not by might, it's not by power, because you've tried your power, you've tried your might, you've tried your ingenuity, you've tried your education, you've tried your money, you've tried your position, you've tried who you are. It's not all of the things that we are. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, it's by his spirit that were saved. It's by His Spirit that were healed. It's by His Spirit that were delivered. It's by His Spirit that were set free. It's by His Spirit that there is victory. It's by His Spirit that we have a Holy Ghost Church. It's by His Spirit that we are who we are. It's by His Spirit. It's by His anointing. It's by His glory that we are a choir, that we are a church. Hallelujah. It's by His Spirit. It's not who we are. It's not who we are. Churches around America today that once had the glory and the anointing of the Holy Ghost are now manufacturing it with junk songs and fake worship and thinking and thinking that's what it is. So far away from God. You let the Holy Ghost come into a church and there will be changes made. Let the Holy Ghost come into a church. He'll flow like he is right here, right now. He'll tell you that what has been forgiven is forgotten. He'll tell you that your life has been changed. He'll show you and give you a new mind. He'll give you a renewing of your spirit. He'll give you a change forecast of what your future is going to be. Glory. Glory to God. I've given you 
10 different things that are going to become a plane this year. I'm going one step farther this morning. We will shout grace. Now hang on just a little while. We will shout grace and be nothing less than a Holy Ghost church. Nothing less than a Holy Ghost church. Folks, I, I, I need to tell you today, I am not, I am not putting anybody else down under any circumstance. Please do not misunderstand me. But this is nothing less than a Holy Ghost church. That's all we are. That's all we, that's what this church was set up to be. That's what this church is and what we intend to be to the degree that its members and in understand two words, Holy Ghost. Understand that. Holy, holy, holy ghost. To the degree that its members are not holy. To the degree that its members are not righteous. To, the, to that degree is a Holy Ghost church hurt and hindered. I have heard it said so many times, as of late, you're only as strong as your weakest link. I want you to ask yourself this day, what part of the chain am I? If I am the weakest link, if this is where the enemy can attack this church, then I'm going to shore it up and be stronger than I've ever been before. If this is the link, if I am the link that the enemy is going to do his best, I've, I've, I've used it many, many times. We played as a kid the game Red Rover, Red Rover, let whoever come over and they would try. We would join hands and they would try to break the link. They would try to go. They would size it all up and see who was the weakest one in that link and try to go there to break the link. And then they would take somebody back to their side and, and vice versa until one was a long line and the other was just one or two people. The enemy is looking for the weakest link and if I'm the weakest link, Lord, I pray that you build a fortress around me and I pray that you make me stronger and let me live holier and let me live closer and let me, let me live more righteous than I have ever lived in all of my life. And that ought to be the prayer of every person that walks in the doors of First Assembly. What you need to be able to do is to tell the devil if you're looking for somebody to fight, if you're looking for somebody to try to break the link, try me. Try me. Come on. Because I'm, when the dust is all settled, I'm still going to be standing there. I'm still going to be hanging on. I'm still going to be holy and righteous. How horrible could it be that a Holy Ghost church would or could be in any degree unholy? When I see churches that are supposed to be holy having tattoo parlors, parlors on a Sunday afternoon or are, are, are selling beer to raise money for missions or doing such, such crazy, idiotic things and such hellish things, how can they expect God to bless? God wants a chosen people. God wants a holy people. God wants somebody that's called by his name. God wants somebody whose garments are washed in the blood of the Lamb. God wants somebody who's righteous. God wants somebody who's going to stand. God wants somebody who will say, devil, you've tried and you've tried, but you've lost and you've lost. And I come to you not with my works, not with my power, not with my might, but by the Spirit of Almighty God. Of Almighty God. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of holiness. The very Spirit of holiness. This word says, abstain from all appearances of evil. Well, I didn't mean to go here, but since I'm out on starting out on this limb, it feels pretty good, so I'll just get on out here. Well, should I 
put this marking on my body or should I put this tattoo on my body? Everybody seems to do it. If you ever watch some of these professional basketball idiots, you can't even see the skin. It looks like they dip down in some of those things we used to put Easter eggs down in and came up with whatever came up. You say, is it all right? Why don't I just put Jesus loves me on my hand? Abstain from every appearance of evil. That which would even appear, run from it. Run from it. Go as far as you can. You say, well, you're preaching holiness. Yeah, I am. Because that's what this book is. If you don't know, it does say on here, Holy Bible. He is the Holy Ghost. Holy, holy. I, I'm not telling you to, to walk on your knees and do some stupid thing. I'm not telling that. I'm just telling you live holy. Where he is, holiness is. Where he is, righteousness is. And let me tell you where you get holy. It's around these altars. Young people, you don't get holy on a Saturday night in the back seat of a car. You don't get holy on a Friday night. You don't get holy doing, you get holy in the altar. You say yes to Jesus and no to the devil at the altar so you can say yes to Jesus and no to the devil outside here. Holiness, holiness. And anything else is a contradiction of terms and a loud ring of hypocrisy. Titus 2.12 says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. <clears throat> Second Peter 3.14, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that we ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Blameless. We must shout grace to the obstacles of worldliness. We are living in a day when worldliness seems to... We are fast becoming the third largest pagan nation in the world. Third, can you imagine? We were founded on the word of God. <clears throat> they came here to worship God. And we are be, we're becoming a pagan nation because we have run from everything. Everything is, is a story. I, I need to repeat it right now. I told you years and years ago, and you've read it. Most of you have about the king who was going to hire a chariot driver. And one man said, I'll volunteer. He said, okay, drive the chariot. And he drove and he went around a large, a, a steep cliff and he went within six feet of the cliff. And he came back and said, I'm a pretty good driver. Arnold the king said, yes, you are. The next man got in and said, I'm a better driver than he is. I'll go within three feet of the cliff, and he did. And he got back, and he's some pretty good driver. Yeah. The third fellow said, I'm better than either one of those. Let me drive. The king said, all right. He got in with him. He got to the cliff, and he stopped. And he said, the first one went six feet from the cliff. The second one went three feet from the cliff. King, I respect your life. I love you. I honor. I reverence you more than that. I'm going as far away from the cliff as I possibly can. That's the way you live for God. You say, I, I cannot, it's not a matter. If you're having to ask me, can I do this and still be a Christian, you can't. Can I do this and still live for God? If you're having to ask me, you got a problem. If you're having to ask something, it's a problem. God will show you by the Holy Spirit why, how, and, and, and the way you should live. We should shout grace to the obstacles of worldliness. They will creep in. And I know, I know that I'm way out on a limb now as far as that's concerned. That won't be talked about in any church in America. But I understand 
when you get to the place of this world, the things of this world can creep in unaware until you're headed down the wrong path before you recognize how far down the path you've gone. It's easy to get there. It's easy to get off center. It's easy to get distracted and and go somewhere else. Just stay with God and say, Lord, I want to live for you. We must resist all encroaching tendencies to conform to the world, its customs, and its styles. That included a whole lot of stuff right there. A whole lot of stuff. We can be sucked in by Eddie, by Whirlpool, by Succo. My mom used to tell me, don't, don't you get down to that Arkansas River because there are suck holes down there. It's the most treacherous river in the world because it bends and it twists and they spin and they spin and they spin and, and it can suck you down and you end up somewhere else and you're drowned by the time you get... The world is just like that. The enemy is just like that. He'll suck you down and suck you down before you realize you're even in the whirlpool. Are oh, you understand what I'm saying this morning? I'm saying, say grace unto that mountain that would have you go away from the holiness of God. And we must maintain our pilgrim purity as we travel through this wilderness. The Holy Spirit convicts the Holy Ghost convicts in a service like this morning we have all already sensed the conviction of the Holy Ghost it's not hard to sense I sense him here right now you can come in hard as a stone but as the Holy Spirit begins to move he will break down that wall. Uh, he will break down that barrier. He will break down that and will make your heart tender to him. There have, been, there, have, there have been many, many folks who have come to church. As the old song said, I came there to doubt, but I left there with a shout. So something got a hold of me. They've come and they've come. Many of you did the same thing. Come to a church not intending to go to an altar. Come to a church not intending to get saved. Come to a church not intending to go to God. But as you sat there, something in the message or something in the song, and as the service began to go, there, there, there are multiplied millions of folks who have come to God that at the end of the service, they couldn't tell you a word the preacher preached. I couldn't tell you a thing the preacher preached the night I got saved. I couldn't tell you a song that they sang the night I got saved. I couldn't tell you another thing in that service the night I got saved. But I can tell you the Holy Ghost touched my heart and drew me to an old-fashioned altar. And he does the same thing today as he's always done. It doesn't make any difference necessarily that I draw you or that the choir draws you or that the singing draws you. The Holy Ghost will draw you. If you get just, just sit for a little while and let him work on your heart and work on your mind he'll draw you to an altar the Holy Ghost draws you to Jesus the Holy Ghost will reprove of sin wherever he finds it and especially in his church and this is the purpose for which he came keep me true Lord Jesus keep me true the nearer to the end I get the more I sing that and the more I cry Lord Keep me true. I don't want to have lived all of these years. Someone told me this last week about a preacher who had preached for years and years and years and now seemingly backslid or away from God. My heart grieves. Why would you throw it all away? Why would you throw it all away? We're too near the end, folks. We're too near the finish line. We're on the home stretch. We can't now hang on for all you're worth. Keep me true. Keep me true. There's a race that I must run. There are battles to be won. Give me power every hour to be true, to be true, to be true, to be true. Keep me true. Keep me true. Keep me true. Keep me true. Let the Holy, I've seen the Holy Ghost come in the service. I've seen it all of my life. I've been in churches where the only time anybody 
hit a key in singing. It was when they crossed it. They'd start out on one and end up in another after they'd gone to two or three others. I've seen them as they picked the guitars so hard that two or three strings would just, you know what I'm talking about, Brother Billy Dale, be broken. And they didn't think they'd really gotten an anointing until they began to do that. However, I've seen those folks in the middle of a song strike a chord, a Holy Ghost chord, and the Holy Ghost come down and touch lives that would never be touched by their singing, never be touched by their music, never be touched by what they did, but a chord that would touch their lives and change them and turn them around and bring them to an altar, bring them to an altar. You cannot come to Jesus without the Holy Spirit drawing you. That's what the book says, draw me. I'm being led in another direction from where I was going this morning. I'm not going to get through till tonight, but the Holy Spirit is the most important factor in a church service. This must be a Holy Ghost church. I will not be satisfied until every sinner that comes in this church comes to an altar. I will not be satisfied until every sinner that gets saved gets filled with the Holy Ghost. I will not get, be satisfied until every song this choir sings is under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and it is. I will not preach unless my message is anointed of the Holy Ghost. These folks do not need to come to a musical instrument unless they're anointed of the Holy Ghost. When you play these things, play them full of the Holy Ghost. When you sing, sing under the Holy Ghost. When you usher, usher under the Holy Ghost. When you come in, come in under the Holy Ghost. When we sit in the pew, get full of the Holy Ghost. It makes all the difference in the world. All the difference. He is the third person of the triune Godhead. He is. He is, he is, he is. He is the one that you cannot blaspheme because there's no forgiveness. You can Jesus, you can God and get forgiveness, but you cannot of the Holy Ghost because he's a perfect gentleman. He comes and you can, as the Holy Spirit breathes on a service, as the Holy Ghost begins to touch lives, as the Holy Ghost begins to draw people and convict, you can turn him aside. You can say, I don't want you to touch me. I don't want you. I don't want you. He'll leave, but you're on dangerous ground. And the Holy Ghost is in this room right now. <clears throat> I feel so certain. I feel so sure of where I'm going. I feel so sure of what's happening right now. The Holy Spirit is speaking. Don't turn him aside. Don't turn him aside. The Holy Spirit was what breathed upon this world. The Holy Spirit is what breathes in our hearts, breathes in our lives. The Holy Spirit makes all the difference in the world. He is here. Bow your heads with me across this room. I didn't get nearly to where I was going. But the Lord spoke into my heart this morning. And he's told me that the Holy Spirit is here touching somebody. Touching somebody. <clears throat> touching somebody. Mm, 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 mm. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. <laughs> God's speaking to somebody in this room today. I've already given one altar call, but this is a second one. God's speaking to your heart. You say, Pastor, don't you understand? I understand one thing. I've talked about the Holy Ghost, preached about the Holy Ghost, and now he's here. And now he's doing his work. And if you're in this place, I don't care whether you knew God 10 years ago, 50 years ago. <clears throat> I don't care whether you've never known him. The Holy Spirit's reaching out 
to somebody right now and doing his best to melt down those barriers don't you let anybody stop you from coming to God don't you let anybody keep you from God's best don't you let anybody anybody you say well I'd be embarrassed to come down that aisle forget being embarrassed I'd rather be embarrassed than burn and when you put it there it makes all the difference in the world Holy Spirit breathe on us oh God right now I don't know when you've changed my direction as you have this morning but I do know somebody's being weighed in the balances and found wanting and that's the work of the Holy Spirit in which I've been preaching I understand that Lord but I I pray that you touch somebody's life help them to make up their mind as the Holy Spirit is talking and wooing them right now that this is their time that this is their time this is their time stand with me across this room and we're going to sing and if My spirit will not always strive with man. I have told you that, but my spirit is here right now to dwell and to pull and to woo you to me. If you will come, I will in no wise cast you out because I knew you were going to be here. I know what your need is, and I am here to deliver. I am here to save I am here to give you that which you need, but do not turn my spirit aside. Let him speak to your heart. Let him speak to your life, and you will be forever changed. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, have your way. Have your way. As they begin to sing right now, if you're not where you ought to be with God, the Holy Ghost is wooing you right now. Come on. These altars are open. Nobody's going to laugh. Nobody's going to bark. Nobody's going to look down their nose at you. This is your time. This is your day. You're here on purpose. You're here on purpose. Hear my humble cry. Other others? Other others?